Uh, he posted a tweet uh, on Thursday after he'd already received a fair amount of criticism for his response to that crisis, saying, we cannot keep FEMA, the military, and the first responders who have been amazing under the most difficult circumstances in Puerto Rico forever. How is he doing, and what do you make of the criticism? Well, this followed on his comment uh, when he was on the ground in Puerto Rico, uh, saying, well, you know, fortunately for you, this isn't a real uh, a disaster like Katrina was, which didn't uh, sell very well in, a, in an island that has 80% uh, of its power gone and 40% 40, 40 of its water on and 80% uh, of its cell phone towers down. So uh, my understanding is, my sense is, the administration is moving to rectify this by appointing a, uh, by appointing a recovery czar, and they'd be smart to do so. Interesting. All right, a little bit of news here on the program. That epic feud between President Trump and his fellow Republican, Bob Corker of Tennessee, chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, only intensified this past week with Corker openly fretting that Mr. Trump might be setting us, quote, on the path to World War III. For his part, the president disparaged Corker on Twitter as Little Bob Corker. Is that helpful to your agenda? It's what he does, and we kind of learn to live with it. <laughs> Jerry sighed. We're all chuckling, but I gather you have never seen anything like this in all your years in Washington. Uh, it is almost a mathematic certainty that one of these two men will pay a heavier price than the other for this. Who will that be? Well, it's hard to see what Bob Corker has to lose at this point. I mean, he's not running for re-election. He's, you know, he barely considers himself part of the same party as President Trump right now. I, I think the odd situation is that the president has gotten himself alienated from Bob Corker, who's the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and John McCain, who's chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, at a time when two very big national security issues, the Iran deal and North Korea, are coming to full boil. I, I just don't think that's a good situation. Now, having said all that, I think one of the things we've learned in the last eight or nine months is that you have to step back from the kind of junior high-level rhetoric and look at what people do, not what they say. And my guess is Bob Corker will continue to work with the administration on the Iran deal, and John McCain will continue to work with the administration on North Korea. And in fact, he had some good things to say about the president on his Iran speech already this week. So the rhetoric is probably worse than the reality, but I don't think the reality is perfect by any means. Michael, the president's supporters seem to like it, seem to view it as kind of Harry Truman giving him hell. Uh, when he goes after establishment figures in this way, even when they are in his own party. So my question to you is, is there political capital to be derived for the president uh, in his public criticism of a Bob Corker or a Jeff Sessions or a Rex Tillerson? Well, I think the president is channeling a frustration that many Americans around the country have, both of a Congress that is not capable of legislating, of getting tax reform done, of getting Obamacare uh, done, and a Republican establishment that has often been out of touch with the real anxieties that people face, let they be economic anxieties or a feeling that in Washington, D.C., that they don't have voice. And I think that's what the president uh, is frustrated by. That's what he's articulating by. And we need to figure out as a party, how do we come together? How do we accept that this is a president who made a more correct diagnosis of where the country is than any of the establishment Republicans who typically run the party or run for president? How do we come alongside that diagnosis? How do we tie it to principle and come forward with an agenda that unifies the party? Uh, that's the, the act that we need to be involved in right now, and it's a frustrating process, and it's not going as well as it needs to be. He was also more accurate than a lot of the pollsters and other wielders of big data who are supposed to have the answers to everything in advance. All right, let's turn to the Democrats now. Senator Dianne Feinstein, the 84-year-old Democrat from California who is the Senate's oldest member, announced this week she will seek re-election for a fifth full term, which, if served in full, would take Ms. Feinstein past her 92nd birthday. Not long after her announcement, published reports indicated a likely primary challenge from this man, Kevin DeLeon, leader of California's state senate. Mr. DeLeon represents the Los Angeles area, is 50 years old, has close to a decade of experience in state politics, and is Latino. Marie Harf, yes. as a Democrat, uh, is it healthy for the party to have leaders like Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer and Dianne Feinstein, all of whom are in their late 70s, even their mid-80s, for, for a party that places such a premium on progressivism and novelty and youth? Well, I don't think age is the question, right? I think that any party that loses... That is my question. It, well, I'm saying it shouldn't be the question. Right. <laughs> um, any party that loses, like we lost in 2016, should do soul-searching. Uh, I think that's natural, right? It always happens. What's been interesting is that the Republican Party, who won, had this really serious level of infighting, too. That, actually, I've been a little surprised about. So, yes, I think the Democratic Party needs new leaders. We need a message that makes clear to middle-class voters around the country why I believe and we believe our policies are best 
best for them. But look, if the Republican Party is going to spend its time and its money primary challenging a bunch of Republican senators, instead of putting that money in the 10 Democratic Senate races where there are states where Donald Trump won in 2016 and we have vulnerable senators, I'm not sure this is going to be a, a win for the Republicans. Sure, we have problems on the Democratic side, but speaking to what we were just talking about, the Republican Party has its own problems, and 2018 at this point could really go either way. Carl, 